Joe Biden claims he used to drive an 18-wheeler. The mayor of D.C. who supported defunding the police now wants to fund them. Plus, Texas Governor Greg Abbott says that COVID-infected border crossers should stay at the border. All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. And God bless the United States of America. All right, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Friday. I hope you had a great week. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with Joe Biden because he has said some really strange things over what seems to be a 500-year career in public office. But here's the thing. It's getting worse. What he says keeps getting worse. Now, first, let's take a little look back at some Biden moments that you might have missed. You know, the rapidly rising uh, um, uh, in with, uh, with uh, I don't know. Uh, so I just spoke at, a, at Dartmouth on health care at the medical school, or not, I guess I wasn't actually on the campus, but the people from the medical school were at the, I, I want to be clear, I'm not going nuts. I'm not sure whether it was the medical school or where the hell I spoke, but it was on the campus. I propose, and I'm going to digress slightly. I, here we, we're in a situation. I, the president asked me to head up a cancer moonshot by strengthening, by strengthening, by strengthening. Hey, look at it. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap, and I've loved kids jumping on my lap. So as you know, there are so many more. It is just endless. The gaffes and misstatements, exaggerations, flat-out lies, and as I mentioned, it's getting worse. This week during a speech, he confused former President Trump with former President Barack Obama. Back in 2009, during the so-called Great Recession, the president asked me to be in charge of managing that piece, then President Trump. Excuse me, Freudian slip. That was the last president. He caused, anyway, that was President Obama when I was vice president. As you know, this stuff happens all the time in the White House and the media, they just brush it off. Oh, it's his stutter, or oh, that's just, he just misspoke. It's no big deal. But what do they do when he flat out makes something up? Well, that's what happened this week, and the White House is scrambling because just out of the blue, Biden said he used to drive an 18-wheeler. That's right. He's touring a Mack truck facility in Pennsylvania, and Joe Biden said this. And anyway, and if we I don't do drive an 18-wheeler, man. Yeah. Oh, I wish oh, I yeah. could. <laughs> That's I awesome. got to. <laughs> what? Biden said, I used to drive an 18-wheeler, man. So when was Biden a trucker? That's an obvious question, and it's a question that has the White House scrambling for an answer. And here's the story. There is scant evidence that Biden has ever driven an 18-wheeler truck. When asked if the president had ever driven such a truck, a White House spokesperson pointed to a December 1973 article from the Wilmington Evening Journal that showed Biden rode in an 18-wheeler on a 536-mile haul to Ohio. Wait, that's the reply? That Joe Biden, back in 1973, rode in an 18-wheeler? How is that the same thing as, I used to drive an 18-wheeler, man? It's not. And here's more. Fox News pressed the spokesperson about the president's claim, noting that riding in a truck is not the same as driving one, at which point the president's spokesperson pointed to a United Federation of Teachers post that touched on Biden driving a school bus in the past as a summer job. Fox News pressed again about the president's claim, pointing out that a school bus is not the same as an 18-wheeler truck, but did not receive a response by publishing time. So there you have it. At some point, Joe Biden has driven a school bus. Now, has anyone out there ever confused a school bus with an 18-wheeler? So you have to wonder, what is going on in Joe Biden's head? That's the question for today. Let me know in the comments. All right, next, let's talk about what's going on in Washington, D.C. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, Hit that subscribe button. Make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Okay, so let's talk about Washington, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser because 
There is a crime spike in D.C. like in other Democrat-led blue cities across the country. And she has a unique solution to fighting the spike in crime. Now, what is her out-of-the-box idea? It's hiring more police. What's outrageous about it is that this comes, this spike in crime comes as Bowser pushed to defund the police. That's right. Bowser and city council voted last year to defund the police, to cut their budget. Now they're seeing a spike in crime, like we're seeing in places across the country, Chicago, New York, Portland, Seattle, on and on and on. These liberals just don't get it. They vote to cut the police and crime goes up. And the thing is, is that people want more police. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, brown, it doesn't matter. They want the police presence. They want more police out there. And here's the story. Washington, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser is proposing hiring 170 additional officers after the city's effort to defund law enforcement last year led to a freeze in acquisitions. The Metropolitan Police Department normally brings on 250 new officers a year, though in fiscal 2021, Top Brass was only able to gain 42 officers after local leaders in June 2020 voted to slash $15 million from its budget, Bowser said. Since the dip in hirings, members of the force have been working overtime to make up for a lack of officers. 42 officers brought in out of 250. And this is what happens when these Democrats run these cities and drive them into the ground. They push their left-wing radical policies like defund the police, and it's the residents who are left to suffer. And here's more. The slash in funding prevented MPD from hosting any recruit classes at the police academy this year, even as residents continue to ask for a strong, sustained law enforcement presence amid a perceived rise in gun violence, Bowser said. To support the hiring of officers, the mayor will send an $11 million supplemental budget for the purpose of training and hiring 20 additional officers in fiscal year 2021 and another 150 in fiscal year 2022. Imagine that. Residents actually want a larger law enforcement presence, and D.C. is not unique. As I mentioned earlier, survey after survey, whether you're black, white, or brown, people want that police presence. They want law enforcement in their neighborhoods helping keep things safe. It's only this radical liberal elite that says otherwise. They know better. They have their private security. They want to get rid of the police for all of us and we see what's happening, and now, basically, Bowser's hand is forced, like the Democrat leaders in other cities, crime is getting out of control, they have no choice but to fund police, which is just absolutely outrageous that they were cut in the first place. All right, so next let's talk about Texas and Texas Governor Greg Abbott, because he is working to stop the spread of COVID-19. And what is he doing? Is he issuing a mask mandate on vaccinated people like the CDC is doing? No, he is saying that if you cross the border illegally and you have COVID, you have to stay there. Because right now, Joe Biden, he's getting these people and he is releasing them into the country. He's telling people to mask up, yet he's letting COVID infected illegal aliens just disappear into the interior of the United States. Greg Abbott? says we're not going to do that. And here's the story. Texas Governor Greg Abbott issued an executive order to try to stop the dispersion of the coronavirus in his state by giving police the power to stop and turn back vehicles, particularly buses carrying immigrants who were caught crossing the border illegally, then released by the Biden administration. Mr. Abbott said police can also impound vehicles. He said he had to step in to handle the thousands of undocumented immigrants being caught that are quickly released by Homeland Security every week, saying there's evidence that they are a significant source of spread of the coronavirus. So this is a great move by Texas Governor Greg Abbott because we know what Joe Biden's policies are doing. The word got out as soon as he was elected and inaugurated to come here without consequence, without any kind of fallout, without any real fear of deportation. People are caught and then they're just released. And now, with an update this week, they're not even being given a court date. They're just saying, being released and told, hey, show up sometime and schedule your court date. So the word has gotten out. They can just disappear into the country. They have COVID, though, and that's the, what has to stop. 
That's what needs to be blocked. Because as Biden has said, we need to stop this COVID. We need to mask up. Yet he's letting people into the country. And here's more. Mr. Abbott, a Republican, said under a federal public health emergency order known as Title 42, all illegal border crossers are supposed to be immediately expelled to prevent the spread of COVID-19. But under the Biden administration, a large number of migrants are instead being caught and released. They are boarding buses and airplanes to head deeper into the U.S., where they risk further spread of the virus, local officials warn. The order permits the state's Department of Public Safety to stop vehicles they suspect to be involved in transporting released migrants. Again, great move by Texas Governor Greg Abbott, and it just shows that on the other side, Joe Biden, the Democrats, the radical left, when it comes to COVID-19, it's all about politics and power and not actually public health. Okay, so let's review for a second. We've got Joe Biden, the 18-wheel trucker. We've got the mayor of D.C. who voted to defund the police, now wants to fund them, and we have the crisis at the border. We need to ask the radical left, do you have a relaxed brain? I got what you call, like, I don't know, a relaxed brain. All right, first we have Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who, as you know, is a charter member of the Relaxed Brain Hall of Fame. But this week, it's not just AOC. It's AOC and her entire staff. Take a look at this. Look at AOC's big smiling face when she thinks that some black liberal wants to take a picture with her. One more, I drove one hour, if I can please. Oh my goodness, yes, of yes. course. <laughs> I drove one hour just to let you know. All right, so far so good, right? Guy comes up, wants to take a picture. The staff has no problem with it. It's an AOC supporter, right? He comes up to her, she's smiling all big, no problems at all. But watch what happens. Watch how everything changes when they find out that this isn't some liberal, but he's a guy with Project Veritas. I drove one hour just to let you know that I am a journalist with Project Veritas. Oh, okay. And I would actually like to ask you about some commentary that you said about us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Charlie Chester from CNN was exposed yeah. as pushing yeah. propaganda and bias. Wow, that changed fast. All he did was talk. He didn't throw anything on her. He didn't stain her with ink like some of these radicals do. Throw something at her head like some of these radicals do. No, he just asked a question. But they find out that he's from Project Veritas and they swoop in. It's like, oh no, this is the worst thing in the world. We got to get rid of him. And here's more. Sorry, when, a rep when an elected representative <laughs> hides so behind much. her fame and refuses to actually stand and be accountable you know, it's, this, is, uh, this is the only recourse we have. Project Veritas, we expose everyone, sir. Yep, AOC and her entire staff suffer from relaxed brain. Rather than having a discussion, a debate, some dialogue with this guy, they swarm in, get her out of there, because photo ops with liberals, that's okay. Actual discussion of issues? Nope, you can't have that at all. All right, so next let's talk about Cuba, because people are fighting for freedom. They're protesting for freedom. and. The Cuban leadership, they have just had their let them eat cake moment this week because as people are wanting freedom, demanding freedom, what did Cuban officials do? Did they reach out and grant more freedom? No, they graciously gave their people a little more rice. Here's the story. Attempting to fuel the narrative that the protesters were demanding an improved economic situation, the Ministry of Interior Commerce announced a giveaway of a paltry three extra pounds of rice per person every month from August to December. Minister Betsy Diaz Velasquez said at a press conference that the extra food rations were in part possible due to humanitarian aid from Russia and Nicaragua, allied leftist regimes. Diaz explicitly connected the rations to the protests, stating the government sought in this way to begin giving the population a level of satisfaction at a time in which the imperialism, the United States, is trying to create irritation and disgust among our people and has a high responsibility in what is happening. Unreal. Crying out for freedom and the government gives more rice. It's just unbelievable, folks. And this is why we have to support the Cuban protesters, those who are fighting for freedom, calling for freedom. And isn't it amazing that Joe Biden doesn't want them in but anyone coming across the southern border, COVID or not, they're welcome to disappear into the country. All right, so how about some breaking headlines from the Babylon Bee? And we're going to start with CNN and their mocked town hall last week. Now, you may have thought 
that this was some kind of propaganda event for Joe Biden. Wrong. CNN airs hour-long PSA on warning signs of dementia. See? CNN was not bad. They're not propaganda. They were actually performing a public service for all of us to show us just how bad Joe Biden is. Next, how about some economic news? Unemployment up 800% among ethnic mascots. With the Cleveland Indians becoming the Cleveland Guardians, you just have to wonder what mascot is next. And then we need to talk about some health news because the left, the radical left, the media, the Democrats, they're all concerned about the Delta variant sweeping the country. Well, they need to keep their eye on another variant. Dangerous new freedom variant causing people to ignore government and live their lives. Boom. That's right. More and more people are waking up to what the radical left is doing, and they're not going to take it anymore. They are sick and tired of being pushed around by big tech, the media, Democrats, radical education like critical race theory. We are waking up. We have the freedom variant, and we are going to fight back. The rest of them, the radical left, they are the ones with the relaxed brain. We just want our freedom, and we're going to fight for it. All right, folks, that's our show for today. But don't forget, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. All right, friends, thanks so much for tuning in. Our next show is actually tomorrow, our Saturday live stream, 11 a.m. with my special guest, Ford O'Connell. He is a Republican attorney, strategist, former congressional candidate, professor. He and I are going to talk about the issues of the day. Take your questions. It's going to be a great discussion. 11 a.m. Central Time tomorrow on my channel for the Saturday live stream. Until then, I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. Okay, friends, thanks so much for watching. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell so you'll be notified. And here's a special video just for you so you can watch even more of the 13-minute news hour. And don't forget to check out GOPUSA.com for the best in conservative news and commentary. We'll see you next time.